I think my question is, how do you overcome disappointment when it stops you to pray? In a, to pray? Well, that's a very appropriate question. <laughs> how do you overcome disappointment? Well, actually, that's very good because that'll get us engaged. Um, how do you overcome disappointment? The uh, first thing I do, and I've had a lot of those, as you know, is that you go back over the promises of God that you already have. And you go back, you know, I was sharing with someone last week that 80% of the words that God gave me about belonging house in the first year have come to pass. That's pretty great. You know, there's a lot of people who have one word in their whole life and they never see anything. I've had so many words from God and so many of them have come to pass. Let's just, you know, I remember it was, it turns out it was 13 years ago. I had this declaration that said, Belonging House is a global movement and I am its apostolic leader. And I said, at that time we had a prayer team, a prayer group that I sent emails out to, there were about 50 people who were committed to praying for Belonging House every day. Well, I got a couple people who emailed me back and said, this is ridiculous. And they made fun of me and they said, Belonging House is a global movement and you are its apostolic leader. And yeah, yeah, I say these things, but I don't believe them. So he said that to me. Another person said, I'm not gonna say things I don't believe in. So that's fine. Well. You know, Sunday, I was the only American on the call. And I remember the day I, I was looking at my sales on Amazon, and there were 1,500 books that were distributed in, in, uh, in the UK. And I, I looked at that, and I said, oh, that's a, that's a game changer. So... So the first way to get over disappointment is to go back and review all the ways that God has been faithful all the times that just when the day that I was going to sign up for my classes at Houghton in my junior year, and I didn't have any money and they were going to throw me out and I owed money from the previous semester. And I left that day with a full ride for the last two years of college. There's a God thing. Um, all the cars, all the computers, all the ones we've given, not only the ones that I've been given, but the ones I've given away. There's the hand of God moving. So, so that's the second thing. You First, you review the promises. Second, you review the miracles. Third, you make a choice, and this is what I do most of the time, is you make a choice and you say, well, Jesus, you are in me, and I am in you, and I don't feel good today, and I'm a little disappointed, but I know that you are victorious, and you live in me, and so I'm going to live in your victory today, and I'm not going to have an emotional response, because that is human thinking, and you choose to walk in the kingdom. And I need to do this today, so we'll do it. We'll all do it. And we just sit here and we wait on the Lord until the presence of Jesus fills us. And we remind ourselves that he is in heaven's economy. We are seated with him in heavenly places. And so the economy of heaven flows through us. And if you go through all three of those things, then usually your disappointment goes away. Sometimes with big disappointments and life disappointments, you have to go, you need some healing prayer. And that's, that's another issue. Um, but, but that's how you can get through downer days and little disappointments here and there. Did that answer your question, Susanna? I guess so. Anyone else have anything they want to share? 
The, oh, she, that's lovely. See, it's a miracle. Just, it's, uh, 315. I just, uh, yeah, I just find that uh, at some, sometimes um, it is difficult to really make a choice for God again and, and again and again. It is. It is very difficult. It really is, Susanna. And, um, and sometimes you just simply have to, to decide. You do. You do. Um, to be honest, you know, twice last week I wanted to quit. I just say I'm done with this. Because I had last week was a very difficult week. And you know what? Sometimes you just say, well, I surrender to you, Jesus. Honestly, one of the things that's gotten me through this week, and I, uh, I'll read you this prayer, and I won't make you pray it, because this is a serious prayer. And people rattle prayers off in their lives, and they say, oh, I pray this, you know, and then they get themselves into real trouble. Because God, you pray these prayers, you make commitments, and then you do something else, and you're in real trouble. But this is the prayer of John Wesley. Lord Jesus, if thou wilt receive me into thy house, if thou wilt but own me as thy servant, I will not stand upon terms. That means I'm giving you a blank contract. Impose on me what condition thou pleasest. Write down thy own articles on me. Command me what thou wilt. Let me be thy servant. Just that alone is more than most people ever commit to. But it goes on, make me what thou wilt, and set me where thou wilt. Let me be a vessel of honor. Let me be a vessel of wood, or stone, or a vessel of silver or gold. I am content. If I not be the head, or the eye, or the ear, one of the noble and more honorable instruments of thy employ, let me be the hand or the foot, or as one of the lowest and least esteemed of all, the servants of my Lord. Lord, put me to what thou wilt. Rank me with whom thou wilt. See, I prayed that and I got you. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed for thee. Let me be laid aside for thee exalted for thee or trodden underfoot for thee. Let me be full, let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and heartily resign all to thy pleasure and disposal. That's why I don't make other people pray that prayer because it's a dangerous prayer. But this is the, this is the word, you know, when, and everything hinges on this. When you surrender to Jesus, you know, and I had an argument with Jesus on Sunday about some things. And he said, well, you surrendered to me. You're consecrated to me. And I've asked you to do certain things. And whether you have 500 people or five people, I've asked you to do these things. And there are other people in my kingdom who need to have 500 people. But you need to have five, and that's the economy of my kingdom. And do you trust me? And do you know what I said, Susanna? I trust you. I said yes, and I will do this because that's what I said, and I don't want to, and you're my friend. And we never get far from that you know this is why people get into trouble in the consecrated life because they they have a consecrated life but they're not friends with jesus and that's a very painful place to be and i have been there and i've lived with people who've been there there's nothing like being in a convent or a monastery full of consecrated people who don't know jesus it's very hard Hard life to live. <clears throat> but, you know, that's how you get over disappointment. Jesus is our friend. I was telling a friend of mine, 
I, I went and sat with a pastor yesterday who's been through a big loss and going through another one soon. And we talked for three hours. We just mostly let him talk. And I told him this story the last year. So this would have been 2019. The mayor of London wanted to make London the, the gay pride capital of the world. And so they had like a huge gay pride thing in London. And I tried my best to be any place but London that week. And the Lord said, I want you to go back to the flat on Notting Hill and on Portobello Road. You know, the white flat I had there, the room there that I could get pretty often. I want you to go back to that place. and I want you to stay there for the weekend, right in the heart of all this. I said, really? I don't want to do that. You heard me say this a lot. Friends, that's okay. Jesus doesn't have any problems with your questions. He really doesn't. He knows that we're finite. He knows that we don't see all and know all. Because he lived like we do. He knew that we couldn't do everything at all times. And so he lets you have questions. But he doesn't let you get off. He doesn't let you have questions and then beg off. It's not like that. He'll let you have questions. Some of them he'll answer. Some he won't. Really? Like, what on earth am I doing at the end of a dead-end road in New Hampshire? No answer to that one, friends. And you accept the things you cannot change. And so, so I said, I'm in this flat in London. You can hear the party out on the street. The Lord says, just sit here and be quiet. Don't go anyplace. I don't want you going anywhere, which was fine. And I sat there. And after a day of that, sitting there with Jesus, the Lord said, thank you so much. I just wanted a friend. Sometimes being Jesus' friend is hard. And sometimes being Jesus' friend is really great. And you can ask everybody, Peter, James, John, Paul, Mary, they all know. Some days with Jesus were just fabulous, glorious, miraculous, mysterious, walking on water, multiplying bread, catching 153 fish. And then there were days with Jesus where you follow him up the hill. And that's, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just thinking, you know, like, at the end, it's always the question before you, like, is he worthy? Is he worthy? Yeah, exactly. And he is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. You know, and what's interesting is I've heard enough people talking recently that God is speaking to a lot of people about consecration and surrender. And we've lived in a period where we've, we've uh, blessed success, but not surrender. And there are a lot of people who are going to stand before Jesus. And I said this, when this started, because it all started when I was in school, I said to one of my professors, I said, Jesus said that if we do all these great things for him and we come to him we're going to say lord lord we did all these great things in your name we filled we built mega churches with 5000 people in them uh, we made tv shows we had radio programs we had million selling books jesus we had a podcast that reached five countries and he's going to say depart from me you never knew me And so we have to always say, okay, 
is he worthy? Is he worthy? Is he worthy? Will I do these things for him? Will, will it be okay? And, and some people are successful. This is the thing. In the kingdom, some people are successful. Some people are wealthy. Some people are, you know, fabulously wealthy. I mean, you know, we have people in Belonging House who are at the very top of their field, and we have people who are not. And that's neither here nor there. <laughs> it's a hard thing. God blesses us, you know. I mean, this morning we prayed that we would have a month of wealth. Because that's what the, you know, the, the prayer book says. We pray for, we bless the month. God wants us to prosper. He wants us to have impact and influence and increase. And somehow in that, it's mysterious in God's economy. And, you know, like we, like what Susanna said, you know, so when you're disappointed and it's really crummy and the bills aren't paid and money's down and people are saying bad things about you. Well, first of all, when people are saying bad things about you, well, rejoice and be glad because that's the proof that your name is written in heaven. That got me through the month of April or March, got me through the month of March. Re March, and I was getting all these horrible emails from people. Rejoice and be glad. My name is written in heaven. I remember when I was getting 500 hate mail letters a day. I was getting 5,000 letters a day, but I was getting 500 hate mail letters a day. You don't remember. And of course, that's, that's more than you can read at that point. You're just... It's all what it is. <laughs> but the first hate mail letter you read, because the first, you always read the first couple, not the thousands, you know. You read the first couple and they really go in. This happened on Friday. I had one person who was really annoyed with me that I'm talking about going overseas. That was the first email I got. Second one, you're the greatest saint of God who follows you. Jesus, wherever he tells you to go. And I'm so grateful for you. Do you realize they, can't, they canceled each other out? Yeah. <laughs> and there's a lesson to you. Uh, Bob Sorge, the great worship leader who lost his voice and then became a, a you know, person who really was hearing from God because of it, said that ble uh, praise and rejection are both po equally poisonous. So you can't let rejection ruin you, and you can't let praise either. You know, you can't believe your press releases. Uh, my grandfather used to say, there's no such thing as bad publicity. Think about that. And there's some truth in that, you know. When Elvis first appeared on Milton Berle's television show in the 1950s, uh, uh, Elvis or Milton Berle received like it was some ridiculous number of letters and about, a, about half of them were really horrible hate letters and he, he called Colonel Tom Parker which was Elvis's uh, agent and said you have a star not that he had all these hate letters, but that he said anyone who generates that much mail is a star, one way or another, because people have a reaction, they have a response. And I think that's the way it is for us in the kingdom, too. Good or bad, there's always going to be something if you're if you're moving in the kingdom. If it's all kind of vanilla, pablum, just even keeled you're not moving in the kingdom because in the kingdom when we're moving in the kingdom this if we're moving forward the spiritual forces of wickedness will rise up against us and often the spiritual forces of wickedness will motivate good people who aren't walking close to jesus to rise up against us it's the good people you know who are our danger 
I don't know who said this. Elizabeth probably knows. The greatest enemy of the good is, or at best, is the good. And we're always asked to do good things, and, and that's often where we get disappointed. So how does this all relate to prayer? This all rambling, but I think it has a point. Surrender to Jesus. Surrender to Jesus. Surrender to Jesus. Surrender to Jesus. Say yes to Jesus. Fiat mihi. Let it be to me according to your word. Like Our Lady. It's back to surrender to Jesus. And then rejoice and be glad. Don't look at the outward circumstances. This too shall pass. And God told us that the chaos was coming and that he was in the chaos. You know, we can't look at any outward thing because, you know, most of the things that the media, whatever that is, tells us to pay attention to are passing. And a lot of them aren't that important. So, and uh, yeah, so we have to, we have to take all these things in perspective. That's why the long haul, the daily rhythm, the ebb and flow, you know, that's why I say we need to read that. That's why I'm into the lectionary. That's why. I'm into daily prayer. Why am all these things? Because it's about the daily flow. And there are days where it just isn't going to go well. Some person's going to say something terrible to you. I hope none of you ever go through some of the level of disappointments I've experienced in life. Really. I hope you never have these kinds of things happen to you. But I'm here to testify that I'm still here. And like we said a couple weeks ago, those who wanted you dead are gone now. Some of them are smoldering in their graves. Some of them are, uh, you know, mentally ill in asylums. And some of them are just retired and out to pasture, no longer causing people pain. And that's. There's a lesson in that. Yeah. What do we do with disappointment? Good question. Amen.